Until recently, Palestine wasn't known for its prowess at the beautiful game. But for footballers and their fans, there's more at stake here than in most parts of the world. Like all aspects of life under occupation, football is political. Six months ago, Palestinian football went from obscurity to earning a spot on the world stage to convey that message. But the winner of this title does get straight automatic qualification into the 2015 Asian Cup. So it's all happening right here. This was the greatest moment in Palestinian football history. And it's going to be a free kick opportunity. Oh, that's a solid goal. In May, thousands of Palestinians celebrated after their national team defeated the Philippines, qualifying for the Asian Cup. At the moment, you've all been waiting for. So how would you rate their performance at the moment, especially considering where they've come from? It's huge. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, no one could have dreamt of something like that. Based in Zurich, Switzerland, Jerome Champagne is a former FIFA executive who started working with the Palestinian Football Association back in 1999. It's a miracle. It's, uh, it's unbelievable to see the Palestinian national teams in the first 16, in Asia, 16 teams in Asia. It's like unbelievable. It's an opportunity that the team's newly appointed coach is determined to grasp. The players have made it this far in the face of extraordinary odds. Right now, it's a struggle for coach Saeb Jendaya just to concentrate. He's from Gaza, where just a few months ago his life was turned upside down. For almost two months, Saeb experienced the terror of the recent war. His family lives in Shujaya, one of the worst hit areas. More than 70% of the neighborhood was flattened. Several rockets hit his home. <laughs> Saeb is anxious about being so far from his wife and children, unable to help rebuild. How difficult is it for you coming back to work after what just happened in Gaza? I think that the atmosphere is not easy for those who were there. مش من السهل إن الواحد يخرج منها بسرعة. المنتخب الوطني بطلب نكون متواجدين. لا بد إنه أنا أخرج من الحالة اللي اللي إحنا موجودين فيها وبأسرع وقت. أنا زح حياة بدها تستمر. Today the national team is training in Jericho. But just getting together like this can be challenging and risky. The West Bank is crisscrossed with security checkpoints that severely hamper movement and filming.
As team coach, Saeb has a permit to travel from Gaza to Ramallah in the West Bank, but not to visit Jericho, a half hour's drive away. Does it seem crazy to you that you are competing in Australia in the Asian Cup, but legally you can't even travel to Jericho for the training of the team? هذه مش جديد اللي شيء علينا إحنا بنعاني منه أعتقد زي ما حكيت أنا في السابق معك وإنه إحنا اليوم. أهلاً السلام عليكم. عبد الحمد أبو حبيب joined the national team three years ago. من أجمل الشغلات اللي نعملت ناد عندي عملية طبعاً إشي بفتح. He also comes from Gaza, but now lives in Nablus and plays for a club in the West Bank Premier League. هذه أغلى ميدالية حصلت عليها لأنه تحنا لآسيا لأستراليا هذه الميدالية وبخذنا فيها بطولة التحدي بصراحة هي أغلى بطولة أنا أملكها طبعا هذه كمان جائزة من فخامة الرئيس مازن على تأهلنا ل... لآسيا وهذا شيء كثير منيح وشيء كثير أسعدنا طبعا أنت شايف كيف عبد الحمد أبوليزيز في المس في هذا الفلات هي بلايمز إت على بيينغ ا باتشلا فار فروم هيز ماذر إن سيسترز إن غازا this is my mom. يعني ماما. يعني أمي. يعني بالغزاوي أمي. It's كل لهجة لها كلام. Incredibly, although he lives just an hour's drive away, in five years he's only been able to visit his family three times. What stops you from going back to visit them? غزة لا تبعد عن نابلس يعني ستين كيلو لكن إحنا بنضطر نستغرق. Instead of a short drive from Nablus to his home in Khan Yunus, Abdul Hamid has to drive to the border crossing with Jordan, wait several hours and drive to Amman. Then he has to fly to Cairo, drive to the border crossing with Gaza and wait for hours before finally going home. And once he's there, he worries about being able to get back again. ممكن تسكر المعابر ممكن ما يطلع ليش تنسيق إن أرجع تاني على الضفة فهاد راح تولد مشكلة في حياتي ومشكلة ممكن إنه كمان ما أقدرش أمثل المنتخب Even for players on the West Bank with the right permits, travel can be difficult. The main road linking different towns passes by the Kalandia checkpoint, a border crossing to Jerusalem and traffic often grinds to a halt. So where are we, Roberto? We are at Calandia's checkpoint. I think the most unhuman place on earth. Roberto Ketlon is a Chilean Palestinian who was in the national team for many years. Now he lives in Ramallah and plays for a Premier League club. What's the toughest part of being a, a footballer in Palestine in terms of the occupation? Mobility. I think mobility. You're supposed to go for a competition. You should be happy, free, concentrated in the game. But sometimes you spend eight hours with interrogation or in checkpoints or because the line is too big. Once, Roberto and his teammates were tear gassed inside their bus. But even that's not the worst that can happen. This is what happened to a FIFA referee who stumbled upon some clashes at a checkpoint in September. جاء ليمارس الرياضة فكبلوه وعصبوه واقتادوه إلى هنا فيما لم تشفع له هذه البطاقة الدولية الرياضية من ذلك The Palestinian Football Association says Israel restricts the movement of everything from soccer balls to its own chairman especially at the border crossing with Jordan I have to, to, to wait four and five hours on the bridge and even sometimes humiliated 
by, 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 by those racist Israelis just because I am in charge of football. Jibril Rajub used to be Yasser Arafat's security chief on the West Bank. Do you think football is specifically targeted yeah, though? Yeah, 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 I think yes. Listen, you know, I can understand sometimes the movement of the, uh, uh, the people, but I can't understand the equipment, uniforms coming from FIFA. Once even the Israelis kept it in the airport for maybe 16 months, and I had to pay as a ransom about $32,000. But the price of the whole equipment was not more than 8,000 euros. Abdul Hamid Abu Habib is on his way to a Premier League match with his club, Balata. The players are lucky today. There are no soldiers at the checkpoints outside Nablus. The occupation means that even when he's selected for international games, Abdul Hamid isn't certain he can make it past the border crossing with Jordan. <laughs> For the first time, the West Bank has a professional football league. Tonight's match is in Palestine's only international stadium, not far from Ramallah and Israel. Jibril Rajoub is credited with the professionalism and success of Palestinian football today. Mr. Rajoub. This former militant, who spent many years in Israeli prisons, is now respected internationally as a sports administrator. Players, grateful for their facilities, fame and relative fortune, see him as a sporting messiah. But no matter how famous they become, they understand that the Israeli occupation acts as a break on their success. From her office next to the stadium, the Palestinian Football Association's international director tries to rustle up travel permits for visiting FIFA instructors. They're due in a few weeks. But Susan Shalabi says there's still no news from the Israeli authorities. So sometimes you don't know until the last minute whether or not someone can come or leave? Yes, it happens all the time. So does this make it difficult for you to know who you will send to Australia, for example? Well, yes, yes. You see that Attempts by FIFA to get to the bottom of the problem always run into the same brick wall. There's always this pretext of security. Securities, for security reasons. And when anybody in Israel says security, everybody just, so they have the reason, they have the justification to do whatever they want. As a member of FIFA, Palestine enjoys diplomatic clout and sport that it lacks in other international forums. And it warns of legal consequences even suspension from FIFA if Israel refuses to play ball. If not, uh, sanctions is the only choice. I think it's clear that we have a majority. It's clear that no one among the family of FIFA supporting Israel. No one. Dateline approached Israeli sport and culture minister Limor Levnat several times to request an interview. We also asked Israeli Football Association chairman Ofer Aini, spokesman for the Prime Minister Mark Regev and Foreign Ministry spokesman Paul Hershon. 
but no one wanted to speak to us about this story. Palestinians are hoping for the best at the Asian Cup in January. But the former FIFA executive who advises them says that doing well on the field can lead to more trouble off it. Listen, I'm not someone who believes in the conspiracy theory. Not at all. But I know that some of the cases are pure, purely, purely harassment issues. And to some extent to punish the fact that now Palestinian football is doing fine. Palestinian football is waving the Palestinian flag outside with pride. And I think when you see Palestinian players proud of themselves, not aggressive, including not aggressive toward their neighbours, that's an example which probably tickles negatively some people. This is one of the things the Israelis criticise you for. They say that you use football to disseminate anti-Israeli propaganda. This is 100% right. This is 100% right. Uh, it's a tool to assure, to achieve my people's national aspirations. I think using football as a tool is better than using machine guns and the grenades.